Hello, while well, there's plenty of videos online showing you how to make these static grass applicators, I thought I'd just share with you how I build mine. As usual, it's just one of those generic electric fly swatters from China. That's all been taken apart there. Uh, I'll be using one of them, and I'll show you what for in a minute when I show you how I'm building this. One of these pieces of metal. But anyway, this is the thing taken apart and what you'll see you have inside here just get something to point with is you'll have a, a positive wire going straight to the applicator itself in this case it'll be in this case it'll be a metal tea strainer and easier to ground wise well you'll only need one of these and uh, I'm going to feed that down through the bottom so it comes out to the bottom and plugs into the baseboard now a word of caution before you start messing with these make sure it's discharged these these hold very high voltages and they make hell of a spark when you uh, activate them with the button at the side so just be careful if you've got a weak art or if you've got a pacemaker I don't recommend you messing with anything like this to be honest with you but uh, other than that yeah go for it I mean the ridiculous prices that Pico are charging 60, 50, 60 quid some of them for basically the same thing really and can't justify paying that kind of money for something you can do yourself for a fiver really in, a, in an hour of, you know an hour of your time you know hell of a lot of savings so you may as well just do one yourself yeah as I say it takes two double A batteries I think they're good for about 100 charges something like that I'm not sure if this is the one where you hold the button on and it keeps the charge, I think it is. But I know for the fact that when I took the batteries out of this it did all the charge in the capacitor, so just be very careful what you're doing. You know, it's high voltage, low current, but you know, it can burn you. Right, the way I've chosen to do this is a little bit different than the way, every, the way everybody else does them. And, I've pulled the long the two the handle off itself off the um, T strainer, and I'm using the hook end. And I'll tell you why because the the welds on this on these are absolutely awful. It will break in the end. These welds at this end seem to be a lot stronger, and uh, it probably well obviously it will be stronger because you know there's not as much tension on it because it's shorter wire. But anyway, you can't solder to this because it's stainless steel, but it is highly conductive. So. Um, yeah, I've, I'm using this end and don't throw away the mounts that hold the bat in. Keep them and cut them down like that into a V shape. Then that will slot inside there. I'll show you what I mean. I'll just put the camera down. So you just take the top off. That will slot in there like that. Then that will go on top. Then you've got a you know a good mounting point for it. Then when you've done, just fill the inside and now hot glue or I recommend two part epoxy actually, that'll do a better job. But once that's in there, you know, it's going nowhere basically. Like that. Okay. So hold it in like that. And uh, like I say, you can't solve to this because it's stainless steel. So um, I'm going to be using these um, retention washers. I'm just going to put a couple of them around the, this centre pole here and wrap the wire around, put two of them in and wrap the wire around that and sandwich that in the middle like that okay right let's start by taking these wires off because they're not the best of quality and I think I should be using a bit, a bit thicker gauge wire anyway even if I don't and I do reuse this, it's going to have to resold because whoever's done this is this is the worst solder job I've ever seen in my life. So let's get rid of that. Oh, lead free solder, it's nasty stuff, isn't it? You can see that on the camera. Get rid. Horrible, horrible solder. This is really nasty stuff. Right, that's them gone, thank God. So, as I say, it's just basically a matter of wiring the positive terminal up to that 
up to this part here that that's going to be hooking onto. That's the anode, and there's the cathode. That's a negative. Now I'll be go into the baseboard, and when the baseboard is wet with the PVA glue, and you're using your static grass, the grass will stand up on end as it would in real life. You know, so that's the whole idea of using these in the first place. But the, you know, Pico charging 50, 60 quid, like I say, it's it's a bit ridiculous, really, for such a basic circuit. I mean, this is high school stuff, really. You know, just a capacitor, a little transformer, and a resistor, simple as that, really. You know, it's not rocket science. However, I've warned once, and I'll warn again. These are high voltage, and they will burn you. These throw off hell of a spark. So it's just a word of caution. If you do this mod, you do it on your own back. And if you get injured, don't blame me. Okay, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this sort of thing for years, so don't mess if you don't know what you're doing. Right, so with all that said, I'll carry on with the video. I do when I'm working on my model railway and anything electrical really, as I have a container like this and I just put old wires in there that I think that I might use. I, I never throw wires away because you never know when you might need some. And it's a bit stupid just going on eBay just to buy a few wires. So I'll be using Cat5 I think for this because this is single cord Cat5 and it's very, um, how can I say, it's very strong and it's very good quality copper and that'll wrap around the mesh hold it easily I can wrap that around there no problem alright so let's get into this little box of tricks and get some wires out get them cut and tinned right now what we need to do is get a piece of this cat fire wire on your third hand helper here uh, about 17 centimeters long not not really too important as long as it's at least 15 but this is 17 so 17 centimeters long and leave the first five centimeters leave the um, insulation on that this first part here and this is going to have to be tinned all the way along right the way along to the end to make it stiffer this isn't actually single cord i thought it was but it isn't this is multi-core but it doesn't matter because it's going to be tinned anyway it's just to stop fraying and things so i'm going to tin that all the way along and uh, when that's tinned, it will wrap around this part here. Actually, no, before I do that, I will put in a washer on there. I've already um, tinned up a washer there. A steel washer. The other ones didn't fit, they were too small. So I'm using a standard steel washer, and that'll go down onto there like that. That'll just fit down onto there. As you can see, I've cut this. I'll just go on top with that sandwiched in the middle. So it just ensures it's got a better contact, you know, it's just a safety margin sort of thing. And it also stiffens this up from moving around too much. Although that will have um, two-part epoxy in there sealing it up anyway. So uh, I'll just get onto this now if I can put the camera down somewhere so you can see me doing this. I know it's just tinning wire, but there you go. You can see that. Can you see that in that background? I don't think you can, can you? Oh, well. Let's get on to it. So it's just a matter of just turning this just to make it more rigid. And like I say, just to stop it from fraying. Doesn't matter if you drop any on your worktop because solder doesn't stick to anything, only metal. <laughs> and this is um, this is just a model railway worktop anyway, so you know we haven't started putting the track down yet. Right, so that's tinned all the way along. Okay. Excellent. That's tinned now, so you know that holds its shape on your bend it. You know. See? So that'll wrap around there, lovely. Oh, I've got tin this end as well. This is going to be soldered onto the board. So let's do that. Like I say, if you can, use Cat5 because it's, it is a really good quality copper. And wherever possible on my track droppers, when we, when I start putting my track down, I will be using um, Cat5 and make sure it's colour coded so I know what everything is. Well, yeah, there we go. That's that tinned. Set your solder station to about 290. Mine's on. What is it now? What's it on at the moment? 200. 
95 200 yeah, about between 290 and 300 okay switch it off a second now and that should just wrap around there I won't do it yet because I've got to put the oh no have I switched the iron off for I've got to put the washer on but that'll just wrap around there like I say you can't solder to this and this will ensure that that has a good connection to the anode which is where the static grass is going uh, years ago when we used to build hi-fis and televisions this is the way they did it anyway um, in places where they couldn't solder they wire wrapped things you know they had a special tool that wrapped around components binding posts so you know it is it is a valid way of doing things so uh, let's put that on there let's get this washer end wherever I've put it wherever I put it you stupid git wherever I put it Ah, right, I've got it. Right, so just solder this washer end onto the end of there. Solder that with a pair of pliers so don't burn my fingers. It's a bit hard doing things like this, man. I need to get myself a, another tripod, I think. Keep saying I can get one, but I never do. Right, let's load him up with solder about there a centimeter or so in just solder that to there like that. make sure it's good and hot or it won't stick there you go done I'm only using the fine tip on my iron this is a 48 watt iron so you know it's pretty pretty decent in it and it's um, it heats up really quick so the solder joint will go underneath so it doesn't interact with anything and knock anything out of balance that'll go underneath like that like that you see then this will wrap around straight the t-strain apart right the next step is soldering that live wire to the circuit board where I took the other red wire from so out comes the soldering iron again. The idea of good soldering is feed the solder into the job, heat the area up. There you go, spot on. How's about that? That's a good joint, that's going nowhere. Right now, you can see there, that's fitted down ready for this to be wrapped around this so I'm going to answer that now right so that's that done now when this part's finished you should have something that looks like that as you can see it wraps around there and it's soldered to the washer itself going into the uh, into the board and you can see there you've got a nice channel to put your wires in that's why I recommend you keep this part makes everything more stable you know you've got a place to route your wire in there and um, once the top's on that will clamp down and this top will screw down like so I won't put it on yet because I've got some more work to do and so the next job now is to fit the ground wire now for this I've decided I'm not going to make it too long I'll probably make it about 30 inches something like that I don't want it too long because I don't want any current loss so but I'm going to use telephone wire because well that stuff is really hard wearing and again it, again it's good copper it's good quality copper and you know it'll do a good job of conducting and at the end of it it'll be terminated with a crocodile clip one of those which um, I've got to wait for them to turn up from eBay or some coming on the way so yeah so that's going to be crocodile clips instead of um, just putting a bare wire at the end, I think that's just pointless doing that so with a crocodile clip you can clamp it down to different places anyway, so I'll get this wire soldered on now and I'll root it down through the bottom with a hole that I've drilled in a minute it'll come out to the bottom, I think it's better having a wire come out the bottom to be honest it's out of the way then and um, this is the wire I'll be using this is um, UK 2 core red green telephone cable 
And as you see, it's got a really good um, insulation on it. It's double insulated, and the insulation on the outside is really thick. You know, it's going nowhere. It's really strong and rigid. Really, uh, uh, you know, a good quality copper, as I say, which is what you want. You don't want it breaking after you've sealed everything up. So that's what I'll be using. Soldering them two wires together into the ground point there, and into the in, and the other end clamped onto the baseboard. So I'll get this wire soldered on now. Okay, that's the ground wire soldered on, there, that red and green wire, going down I put a blob of hot glue there, just as a strain relief, and if you notice the wire now, because this is oval shaped wire, it, it clamps straight in between the um, battery compartment there, so it'll be hidden, and I put a blob of hot glue there at the end as another strain relief, and some heat shrink there, as an extra protection. So, with all that said, I think electronics wise it's pretty much done apart from me tinning the end um, ground wire. And we can um, test it out and make some sparks. Here goes for the testing. Put my batteries in. Make sure these are alkaline by the way, don't use cheap ones. They won't last five minutes. Alright, that's the batteries in. That's the ground wire I've just soldered up at the end. Alright, let's see if we get a spark. I should imagine we get quite a bloody big spark. You can hear that high pitch noise. It's charging up. Right, let's move out the way. Whoa! Yes, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put the camera down a minute and see if I can get a bit better shot. Whoa! Damn! Bloody hell, that's powerful! You don't want me touching that the other end. Whoa! few hundred volts there by the look of it. Make sure you've discharged it after as well because it will hold a charge. But there, anyway, that's working. So I'll get the top bar on and um, we'll try it with a bit of static grass. This is a static grass I use from Javis. Seems to be pretty good quality stuff and it's uh, pretty good for end gauge as well because it's about like two and a half mil or something like that in length. Uh, Javis number two summer mix. Good stuff. Got this from down Penzance uh, a few weeks ago. Seems pretty good. Although it's the first time I've been using or going to use this uh, static grass machine. Yeah, it's um, it seems good quality. I tried put some down with just glue on its own and just tried the old Hoover trick. You know, even then it looks okay, just as testing it like you know. But it is pretty realistic in colour, it's not just green, there's nothing worse than that, just having green, grass isn't just green, you know, it's, it's a mixture of colour isn't it, so I'll go try this out now on this piece of paper I've just uh, filled the top of that in now with glue now um, that epoxy, so that's sealed up now so that won't budge Now I've got no crocodile clips at the moment, but this is basically the principle of what you do with this. You just put something down as a ground, so it makes contact with the glue that you put down. And that's what I've done here, just with this screw for the time being, just to test it. And uh, I'll put the battery in here and we'll give it a go, eh? See how it looks. Well hopefully you can see that, so we'll give it a shot. Here goes. Some in first. I'd say that was a result.
Excellent. It's working great. Bit too close. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's working awesome. Yeah, it's standing up. And you can see it's sticking. Result? Just keep it away from the screw or this happens. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's the end of the video. It's all done. It all works. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been useful for you. Once again, if you've got any comments, leave them in the comments box below. And um, thanks again for watching and stay tuned. I've got some more videos coming soon. Thanks a lot.